Hello there. In this video, I want to go over Control Net and Stable Diffusion, what it is, how to install, how to use it. So let's go ahead and start first to look right here. I'm using Automatic 11.11 installations for the Control Net where we're going to use it as extension. Control Net is a neutral network model that controls stable diffusion models. You can use control net along with stable diffusion models if you need it and you notice right here because we will use it stable diffusion models on the top as as we're going down below we will use it control net models so i was speaking about stable diffusion let's go and see how we can install it so we can use it you can approach this two ways one you can go directly to the github and download it there a standalone to the stable diffusion or as the part of the Matic 11 and 11 installation. This is not hard to do, but the problem with this, you will need upkeep to every new revisions and go check. The easiest and the most recommended way to do it is going to your stable diffusion, go to the extension tab and extension tab. If you do not have it already installed it, you can go to the tab available, click on load from and type in a search control net from these options you want to select as the web control net manipulation installations click on install after installation is completed it should will be available for you to see in your installed extensions at this time i highly recommend for you to click check for updates and after it's done, click Apply and Restart. This is, should be Enable Control Net for you. In some cases, you will need to restart the server. But don't rush it, because when you click Apply and Restart, some models of Control Net will be downloading on your machine. If you use it installation from the extension tab, then it will be located in your Stable Diffusion installation folder, Extensions, and down below you'll see you have an SD Web UI controller. If you expand this folder, you'll notice another folder called models. Click on this models and you should have it here models installed. At the time of recording, I have it 14 models installed. If for some reason you're missing some or you want to upload it, uh, redownloaded them or reinstall it, then I will recommend for you going to the hoggingface.com control net version 1.1 and going down to file and versions all of these links for every resources that i mentioned in video will be available down in descriptions here you'll notice you have it all of these models you need all you need python and yaml so you need both of these one will be decoration and one is a model to process be sure you have it the latest models and personally if you have it already control net installed previously i will recommend you to check be sure that you have it new models the reason if we look on old models you can see the size is quite a bit large they about five gigabyte each it's quite a bit uncompressed big models new ones it's much more smaller it's only about 1.4 gigabyte the optimized and the much faster loading in the memory of your machine also if you finish downloading models and you install it i will highly recommend again restart your server so it will reread all if you have a control net properly installed it, you should have it drop down box notice if i expand i have a control one two i have three different types of control net those configurations will be in a setting tab and on the left side you can see you have a control net option click on the control net this is open our model right here on the model notice i have it version 1.5 or it's v15 this is what we're going to use control net utilize stable diffusion 1.5 in some cases with special settings you can run version 2.0 but in most cases it will be only 1.5 next below you want to specify where you want to direct for maps if you have it it should be filled up by default things what you want to change it is control net max model and you notice i have a three models and also cache size the cache size for me is matching how many models so i don't need preloaded uh, them again if i use it more than one and right here we have a max amount 
it's a three which is correspond to those three tabs or three models i can use that same time you can go much higher if you need it but mostly i found three is about mostly what you will probably use if you're creating even animations or other down below you will have it checked on the box do not append detect map to output you probably want to uncheck this at least at the beginning because when you render and create image it will also showing you map you can see what map was used it's very nice to debugging tool at least at the beginning till you get familiar with control net next below also check allowed other script to control this extension this is will help you in the future if you decide to use like the forum or any other application to access control net and use it for the animations after this completed click apply settings and reload your basic use of stable diffusion it can be when you use a text to image we have a prompt where we can type for example dark forest and without even any selections we can click generate so this is the basic basic use however what is control net add it is additional condition to what we want to do so here is example we just have it one text old man in a hood sitting on a chair rembrandt lighting epic dark majestical this is a render without any specific conditions that we can apply i can apply additional condition if i wanted for example use it control net by placing image inside switch to the open pause click on preview be sure the preprocessor is working and after by enabling use of the control net I can generate again, but in this case, the condition that I want to use it, it is this pause that I extract from previous photo. And now, because we apply this condition, our image that we created look very close by the pose to what we have on our photos. Of course, the control net, you can notice, have it many, many different type of models. In some cases, we can use like canny edge detection of the object and also close. And as a result, you can see we have it a little bit more resemble with a close what we have it. So right here, that's what we created. And this is our image. You can see the close very close re resembling what was before. Control net can create the point of reference or a shape of the object based on the edge, depth math and all different options. Beside the installing control net models, we also can use a T2I adapters that stand beside the create points and outlining. They also are neutral network models that provide extra control to our images by generating with a diffusion model together. Select T2A. This is for the adapters and from the adapters, we can go select what type of adapter we want to use it. Notice in this case, we don't use it any preprocessor. Preprocessors, it's allowed us to take input image and analyze in specific way. For example, you can see right here, we have an image and we're using the CAN preprocessor, which is detect edges for our image. And now when preprocessor run, we have our depth map created. But because depth map, it's not yet integrated with our stable diffusion this is where the model step in model will take image that already passed pre-processing with all the data that created and controlling the stable diffusion how it will going to create our image based on our text or other input because the model need to understand preprocessor what is expecting the model should be match our preprocessor in this case we can go to control at and select depth as your collection is growing it's maybe sometimes hard to find so in this case it's much easy if you just select options for example if i can select depth you can see right here it select preprocessor and select models i'm not necessarily like to create with this preprocessor in this case if you want modified you can select different preprocessor the reason for example i like to use it letter plus plus because it's allowed me to remove near percentage or background so i can isolate front or back of the model and work that way general working with control net it's a similar to what you do with a text to image 
we select our um, primarily model or checkpoint we want to use it we write our text prompt if we need it we can write any negative prompt next we're creating selecting our sampling method the method is will be based on what model you used before or your personal preferences next we're selecting sampling steps how many want to apply it of course options for the width and height which in many cases need be what is a model train on currently because i'm using rpg4 it is 512 by 768 next we have a cfg scale by default is lift to the seven in some cases you maybe want to keep it similar seed number if you want consistency and that will be mostly if we're using uh, the forum or some other animation there you can see i have a step animations this is different extensions and not related to this video so i won't go in there the next we have control net dub with our three primarily that was selected choice when we work with images notice by the single image we also have a batch processing in this case, you can point to the specifically directory with a PNG or a JPEG files and control net will be sequentially reading those files and using inside. And as I said, second sequentially, it's meaning images also need to be named properly. For example, 001, 002, 003, and so on. Below, we have the option to select. Notice we have it enable. When you enable, the control net it will display on the top and also allowed us to um, control our generation by the selecting control net options if you did not select properly preprocessors and models the control net most likely will give you error or will be ignored also we have options for the pixel perfect and it is optional can be selected and it will use it image height and width that you specify in text to image to generate pre-processed image so in this case it will match your settings inside the text to image or image to image and if your image is a little bit different from what you specify i recommend to kind of enable and select this check allowed preview so we can see result we have it the model and this is actually notice what i said before if you go to preprocessors and you can see you have it a very large selection of them and it's very hard sometimes navigate so with this selection it does help you to tune down to specific set for example if i'm going to click open pause selection you'll notice my preprocessors selection uploaded will apply to open pose as well as the models will be selected to open pose as well if not all models or processors selected you can always click on the refresh and this is will re-read directory where is the our models is located and repopulate this list next to the preprocessor we have this kind of spark icon that has allowed us to click and run preprocessor and preview how it will look this is very useful if you work with too many um, options in one be sure that you receive the item that you wanted you receive this look so let's go ahead and look on what processors and models we have it to see what ability provide for us we'll start with the canny in canny is the general purpose kind of edge detection options so when we select we can go click on the preview and you can see it is definitely showing us the edges this is general purpose kind of work very well in most situations however we draw with this model because we're not just a passing for example how model look and everything it's passing close elements around so it will be creating settings very similar to what our reference photo is and if we select in canny pair processors we have it also option below can a threshold high and low so this is amount of details in a low or high so general if you want to increase all details in everywhere we can bring them a little bit down in values and run preprocessor again and you can see we have way more details and same things apply to opposite if we want to reduce amount of details it's producing we can apply for both high and low or you can just separate for them and run preprocessor and you can see we have it much lower so next we're going to look on the depth and the depth selection will provide for us layers less plus plus meets and zoe by default depth meets it just will generate 
And this is a classic one depth model, so we can preview how it's created. Notice we don't have it any optional um, adjustments that we can apply to that depth model in this case. And this provides some details. The models Lars and Lars Plus Plus will provide even more details. In many cases, it will even render background. And because we can render background, we also have additional options below where we can remove percentage of near or background. Keep in mind, because this is, does not have a true 3D mapping, it is guessing. So it's based on the AI guessing by analysis of the image. Overall, we have our classic, we have it classic as meters, we have it layers with more details, layers plus plus with much more details, and depth zoe is somewhere between layers and meters. Also, when we select it, we have it our model to use. In my drop down, you'll notice I have it some other elements, but those ones, it's for the adapters which does not necessarily require preprocessor when you use them. Depth map can use it for multiple reasons. For example, if you want to create a depth of field or if you want to remove any specific background or any specific planes inside the image. So our next is a normal and it does create it uh, by default bias, but let's go to the midest one first. One thing when we're creating normal mids, it will tend to actually separate our object. It's work very well if we need to separate and isolate our object from the background. And next, the buyer, it will also will take some background in considerations and will create it details for both background and uh, model itself. Open pose probably one of the, the most popular option in control net because it allowed us to analyze our object or objects in image and based on this creating specific poses for them. By default, first selection will be open pose full, which included everything, included a facial expression, face, position, even hands and fingers if you have it. But if you want anything specified, you can Specifically, we can expand and select just open pose, which will only display the position of head, arms, legs. We have it also option just for the face. In this case, if we want to display facial expression, we also have it face only. What is done this face only will remove it any position of the hands full that we saw before, include everything. And specifically, if you want just the hands. Because the hand and fingers will assign to the arms, it will create everything but just remove it our face position. Okay, let's select our face and everything and we'll go ahead and generate based on selected model of open pose, the preprocessor open pose full and model open pose. Here we have it, our image of the old man in a hood, Rembrandt lighting, epic dark majestical, and you can see the pose was based on same from our model that we preloaded. I said this is one of the most popular probably open pose, at least for me when I'm using. And many times I may use this pose with conjunction with other ones like Kenny, open pose, maybe included the depth for the blur or maybe even normals to isolate the object. Okay, our next is MLSD, which is mobile line segment detections. It's a straight single line detection. It is very nice to extract some outlines, architectural, building, street, something that have it straight lines. It's work very well. And you can see as we run preprocessors, we have it model is almost all removed on the middle, but all what we have it is straight line. So it's work very well in combinations. And if for example you decide to render background, you can use it this um, model to create very nice, beautiful backgrounds. Next we have it a line art. And that this is try to create and outline the image, something create like almost simple um, anime, simple drawing line, drawing type of render. And if we expanded preprocessors. You can see we have it line art anime specifically that is a little bit more applied. We also have it line art, the noise, coarse, realistic, standard. And as we render, 
with old man hood we created this kind of animation style and I made it drying a little bit with based their line art enemy soft edge will act somewhat similar to the edge detection only it's add a little bit more flexibility and gradient to the edge allowed more flexible um, render so if we think about the lines as restrictions this is a little bit widen restrictions and may create more um, interesting result and here as we're creating for example a space girl futuristic lighting epic majestic and animated style you can see we create very nicely based on the our image with a soft lighting so if we're going and replace for example to head quality let's go refresh it we'll have a detection a little bit more details included like eye and mouth if you notice right here we don't have necessary expressions because in previous model does not provide this amount of details so but without details it provides also more flexibility and here's our, our result scrub scrubble preprocessor will try to turn our image to those like hand drying type it's self-explanatory almost scrubbing creating um the very nice if you try to create again some painting hand painting and other things but it is personally i think it's a little bit more limited due to um similarity to other preprocessors but only with a less resolution so personally after using all these preprocessors i found the canning actually most useful and it can always reduce amount of the details to achieve similar result like the previous preprocessor created this one is again it's a my personal opinion and you maybe find more use than me notice right here has it because it does not recognize it's actually put it eyes and created kind of a little bit uh, weird creature for us okay segmentation next it will um label for us what kind of object inside and if you work with any post-processing with 3d rendering you many times try to isolate objects and use it so in this case it's very useful when you save the map because in this case you can take it and use inside another applications to isolate objects or to apply other elements and you can see right here it's try to differential some object but it's a little bit harder with transparency so let's try a different image in this case and there is a perform better you can see separation trying on the objects they also have a different type of preprocessors and they corresponding to the different type of the data sets it was training with to creation you can try to readjust them and see which one may work better in your case and you can see it's separate object try to separate table flowers and background so it's produced depend on the what preprocessor and what preprocessor train on so we'll use it so let's go shuffle it will try to shuffle all images stir up kind of input on the image and may create very interesting result but not always it may work work very well as um, space or some other ones if you want to create some unusual look so you can take your image put it in for our next model we're going to use it in paint this has allowed us to analyze image based on the style color and other elements and change scale change elements inside so we're going to actually use it as out painting increase in size or change the ratio for example you can see right here we have it um within high 512 512 even our image is 16 by 9 dimension also i'm going to switch this to the settings and set to 35 on the steps we leave it default width and height in painting here we also want to switch to resize and fill so it does not crop otherwise the image will be just cropped on the side we don't want to do this and inside here let's go says water color i think this will work fine problem with this method sometimes we need to tweak a little bit more with sampling steps and other properties like reduce scale so we achieve better blending on the edges so let's go ahead and try right now and here we have it our image you notice just slightly touching the top bottom actually come up very good but top does a little bit visible so we need to adjust maybe cfg scale a bit better on this case but generally you can see it's 
extended our image and created different dimensions. So this is actually very nice in painting tools if you want to change something inside image and definitely if you want to upscale or um, change out painting on your image. Okay, our next model is we're going to use the options IP2P is work with images. You notice as we're selecting our preprocessor is not available because we're going to utilize the image itself. What is important is using special control um, model after this. And we set correctly IP2P model. How it's work is take image and we can apply specific effect to this image. For example, let's go ahead and says work here. We'll just go set make cover with snow. So I want to put it all of this inside the snow. Let's go ahead and enable our control net. No preprocessor, model, and everything seems correct. Let's go ahead and click generate. And here we have our image. So it's not as it's our chair and all of stuff around cover with snow. So it's kind of work very well. You know what? Let me switch this to 768 because you notice right here as image we add gray bars because the resolution of the original image is not square. So let me go ahead and generate one more time. Okay, right here, and we have it perfect generated all chair in snow. So definitely with this model, you can create a different type, like take house, put house on a fire or other things. Very nice, very um, interesting type of processor. So next one is will be references. And this you'll notice right here only preprocessor because we are will reference specific image. And nice about this, you don't need to have it model because it will render specifically to reference of this photo. So for example, let's go ahead and I'm going just to place one here. And as our prompt, let's go ahead and type maybe um so you can put it wherever you want it. I think this one will work very well. And we'll just leave it everything as default. Again, we have a fidelity of stylization, so it's a balance. Do we want more towards words or image? So we can switch just a little bit more towards our image. Let's go ahead, generate. And here you can see we generated different, but it did reference our model colors, arch, and everything. Of course, we need to apply some negative prompts to remove extra limbs and other things, but for the test, it's very um useful mostly if you want to create like portrait based on somebody else but you don't want necessarily precise copy so in this case it will use it as a reference to this image for the color some major big details and positions okay next we have a to ai this is our adapters notice when you select adapters you don't really have it preprocessors. You have it some of the color sketch and stylizations, but generally you have it a lot of preprocessors. Most of them will be duplicate or doing similar with does control net. Okay, let's go ahead and look on some preprocessors. And we have it, of course, color grid. If we look on a preprocessor color grid, it so will give it as a position of the colors. It's useful to reference to um, what colors can we using, of course. We have a sketch as well. You'll find some of this very similar and familiar what we have in control net. And of course, clip vision. And this allowed us to create a specific noise. Same with the model selected. It is apply similar to model that we looked before with a control net previous selections. So let's do a couple things. One, let's go disable our preview. And we'll go back. This is actual models. It's quite a bit large collection of the models. And of course, as you work alone, you can find something your favorite models. But besides working with the specific models and work with single image as we did before, you have the ability to mask. You'll notice we have some properties that this will change some below, depending on what model, but just under selection of preprocessor and models, those selections is consistent during the old time. They represent the control weight. It's how much control um, will be, con how much control net will be affecting the resolution and stable diffusion. How much of the effect will apply on the model in stable diffusion as well. Usually, it is one 
if you want it if you you can increase higher however effect and result won't be as desirable sometimes the fan does not work well and maybe control weight you maybe want to reduce if you're using more than one control net next we have it starting steps again remember we have it steps just above and it's tell when on which step control net should step in because we have this denoising things happening and at first you have a big flexibility in selection and you can say i want to control net start affecting maybe on the third or fourth step so where is the already major object created and the same when you want to stop control net to be effective the ending control step may work better if for example you have a too much digitalization on canning and you don't want some of this fine details in the end you want allowed something more going from the prompt then you can cut off ending control steps when you want to do this okay next we have the preprocessor resolution and this majority if you draw by yourself or created some other elements personally i like to set preprocessor to highest size so for example if the image was 512 by 768 i put it here preprocessor resolution 768 so it's at least it's b process everything but the same things you can do if you just without putting there if you just click pixel perfect then you'll notice the option is disappear so it will read it same size of your image and will create that way so you have different options pixel perfect or you can also just type it in size that you want to use it next okay below we already spoke about this control mode we have it balance it prompt or control net more um, important in the self-explanatory it's where you want to stable diffusion pay more attention and resize mode just resize image this will affect if your image need to be too clipped or use it you'll notice sometimes will cut maybe top head in many cases if you want to utilize all control net image you probably want to go to resize and fill in this case and definitely when you work without painting it's what you want to use it loop back automations it's work if you need to have it on the same image in many cases will work a little bit better with the batch files in most cases i found i don't use this option speak about batch file if we go switch you'll notice the image a drag and drop disappear but you still have it, all the other properties here inside the input directory you just uh, refer to the path we have the jf or jpeg single image located and then next we have a second control net which is identical to another one and you can also enable but in here you can have a different type of the control net models for example if in the first one i want to have this done by the poses so i want to be sure the poses is exactly the same and remember when we do the pose it will analyze and put it and sometimes scanning not necessarily will pick up properly position of hands and other things and then in my another control net i for example want to have it um, let's go download there and i want to have it canny so it will have the detailizations, for example, on an outfit, maybe some like smoke and alien. So I want to do this way. Overall, control net is have a very big ability to kind of, to create properly image the tools, a lot of flexibility and everything. It's maybe overwhelmed at the beginning, but as you start using, you find this very intuitive and nice to use. One other big plus about control net because it is extension. And if you allow to work with other applications, you can go even inside application like the form and use here control net as well for your animations. And well, thank you for watching this video. I know it's maybe was a little bit long, but I want to be sure we go and can touch all details and possibilities. If I miss something or you have better information, please let me know. Give me notifications, um, send me messages. And if you find you like this video, please share with other people. It will be very helpful for me if more people see this video and pop up on YouTube. And by the way, if you're watching this far away, you are my hero because you don't follow sleep and you don't give up on me. And I appreciate this. Thank you and have a great day.